Is it cool enough in here? So I want you to imagine that you are looking in the mirror. Just look yourself in the mirror and ask the question. You know the question. Who am I? So do that. If you want, you can close your eyes. Just imagine you are looking at your reflection and just raising that question in the mind. Who am I? That's how we begin our soul journey by raising that most fundamental question, the most important question of all. You can open your eyes now. So, if you were to ask that question and then consistently contemplate on the answer, just constantly asking the question and contemplating. Who am I? Who am I? The first thing you will realize, which is very obvious, that in the reflection you see in the mirror, right? That there is this body. Very obvious, right? I'm this body. Okay, you know, we start there. Because I see this thing, right? This this thing which is so obvious. Something that I can. I mean, it's right there, right? You can see it. Something that you used to see, smell, touch. Right, so that's very obvious. But if you were to continue your contemplation, then you might realize that there is something beyond the body. Right? That there is something which makes me feel things. Right? We feel things, don't we? We feel the warmth and the cold. We feel hardness and softness. We have all felt that, right? We feel things, we feel emotions. Yeah. You might also realize that we perceive things. We perceive the world around us. And obviously, we think, right? So there is this element of feeling, perceiving, thinking, right? Okay, so I'm not just the body. There's this thing beyond body. Let's call it mind, you know? Okay, so there's this body and there's this mind. I'm the body and mind, right? Contemplation continues, right? You continue your thinking, your analysis and synthesis and we'll talk about that later why we need to analyze and synthesize analyze and synthesize then only you can come at the ultimate reach the ultimate truth only analysis does not suffice but anyways so there is this body there is this mind you are contemplating thinking you know just trying to analyze synthesize and all of a sudden If you're lucky, <laughs> and that moment is a blissful moment, you'll realize that there is something that is actually experiencing the body and mind. There is that experiential element to you, you know. There is a physical element, there is an element of feeling, perception, thinking, on and on. But beyond that, you'll realize that you are actually experiencing the body and mind. And that experiential aspect is called consciousness. Okay, so now you know that I'm the body, mind and consciousness. Analyzing, synthesizing, you continue your journey, right? I'm just giving you a road map. This is the task of lifetime, you know. And, and I'm just kind of describing the terrain, really, that's all I'm doing. We will have to actually experientially understand, not by just reading or hearing what I'm saying. Experientially understand the whole terrain. You know? Actually take the journey through that terrain. 
that's the the objective okay so i'm the body mind then consciousness continuing the analysis synthesis and all of a sudden you begin to realize you the question that I, that that i asked in the beginning who am i maybe that's the wrong question the question should have been what am i it's a very subtle very very um what shall i say profound difference between two questions who am i versus what am i we'll get into that sometime and so the journey continues and suddenly you realize that this body mind consciousness these three components are really not separate but they are intertwined they are interdependent coexisting distinct but together coexisting one bundle you know it's one thing but distinct then you realize then you may want to give a name to that bundle okay okay there is this body mind consciousness they are not separate they are interdependent intertwined they are one as a bundle and then you give that bundle name you call it soul so soul is just a name it's just a, a linguistic construct to express what you are really you know that's all it is it's not something uh that has an identity or something that is separate from body mind consciousness nothing like that just a name like i have named sudhir you know this sam or whatever you know, we just give names to things right just a name the realities are three body mind and consciousness so in effect when i'm saying we're going to take a soul journey we are basically going to take a journey through the body through the mind and through the consciousness that's basically what we're going to do so you saying that a soul is a truth not the body mind and consciousness so finally the truth is soul uh the truth is body mind and consciousness and we are just using the word soul it's just a word soul to describe the interdependent phenomena of body mind consciousness Just a name. It is that the bundle is the soul, right? Correct. But bundle is the soul. But generally, what we have read or what mm-hmm. we understand that right. soul and body is different. Yes. Distinct, yes. not different. That's the soul is not perish, perishable, but mm-hmm. body is. Right. Right. So, so I didn't understand. Yeah, we're we're getting there. Mm-hmm. We're getting there. We're getting there, and that's where the difference is between taking the whole journey from how to what. and not stopping at how if you stop at how you will not solve that mystery which you just raised that's the beauty of asking that question what am i you know only the greatest of the great warriors the noble ones go beyond that we're going to go there but continue with that question you know continue with that thinking why what is this what is you know so what is it or something beyond body mind consciousness the the point to understand is soul is just a name given to a phenomenon of matter mind consciousness or it's just a name given to a material and non material phenomena that arise together and cease together arise and cease together that happen together a material and non material phenomena together you're calling it soul now when you take your journey through body mind and consciousness what you're going to do is find out the ultimate reality of each distinct phenomena okay 
first we are going to find out what is this matter, this body we call. We are going to look through it. Keep looking, keep looking, keep disintegrating. Analysis, right? Analysis means disintegrating. Keep disintegrating, disintegrating, disintegrating. And then integrating, integrating, integrating. Synthesis. If you just do analysis, then that mystery will never be resolved. But if you do synthesis, then that mystery will also be solved. Is it through the breath? We are analyzing the body or no. the practice? Right. We are just sharpening our faculty of mindfulness, sharpening our awareness so that we can take this journey. Just like unless you have a microscope, you cannot look through things, right? So we are turning our mind into a microscope. And to do that, we are doing all these practices, sharpening it, getting it ready. So you can look through the body, look through the mind, through consciousness. When you look through the body, you will realize that ultimately, you know, like if I look through my body, I'm going to find that it's made of cells and muscles and tissue and all that, right? Gut. If I look through that, I'll know, I'll find out it's made of a bunch of cells. Look through that. I'll find out that it's made of protein, fat and carbohydrates and lipids and water and things like that. Keep looking, 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 looking. We're going to keep looking until we cannot go any further. Okay? That's called the ultimate reality. We're going to go to the bottom of this phenomena called matter or body. We're going to explore the ultimate reality, quote unquote, of matter. Okay? Those ultimate realities of matter, there are 28 of those ultimate realities of matter. Those are, we are again giving it name, soul. This is the soul about matter. These 28 ultimate realities. And pardon me for throwing out these numbers. I'm just, you know, like I said, giving you a road map. Um, but we are going to actually, that's why analysis is important, right? So you have to be quantitative, qualitative, whatever, you know? Um, so don't worry about the numbers right now, but you will realize that there are 28 ultimate realities about matter. So you know the ultimate truth about matter. Then you move on to mind. You disintegrate the mind, disintegrate, disintegrate, disintegrate. Integrate, 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 analyze, synthesize. You'll find out that there are 52 elements of mind. Mind is made of 52 elements. Ultimate truth about mind. You cannot go further beyond that level. That is the ultimate truth about mind. Then you move on to consciousness. You penetrate, disintegrate, analyze synthesize. You realize that, that there are 121 types of consciousness. You realize the ultimate nature, the intrinsic nature of consciousness. Again, please don't worry about the numbers. The point is, we are going to explore the whole terrain to such extent, the width or the breadth, and to such depth that nothing remains to be known. That's the bottom line. So you have found out the ultimate truth about consciousness. So there are these ultimate truths. 28 material elements, 52 mental elements, 121 types of consciousness. All these ultimate truths combined, we are just giving it a name, soul. Soul is basically the ultimate truth. Okay? It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Okay? It's not stuff. It is neither material stuff nor non-material stuff. It is just another name for ultimate truth. And there is not only one ultimate truth but there are these many ultimate truths. And it is important to understand that one ultimate truth does not exist. There are many ultimate truths. That is the reason behind uh, analyzing and synthesizing because when we think that there is one ultimate truth, that soul is the ultimate truth, like one something, one thing, you know, then the delusion arises of some ultimate almighty or some absoluteness or something like that, some, you know, you know what I mean, right? 
So to avoid that delusion, you have to keep focus on analysis and synthesis so that we remove that final separation from the truth. Okay, so that's the reason behind I saying repeatedly that soul is just a name given to these many ultimate truths. When you understand consciousness at the ultimate level, you have understood soul. Very simple. When you understand matter at the ultimate level, you have understood soul. It's just a different aspect of understanding the soul. Whenever we look at something, we have to look at it from various different angles, not just one angle. Then only we can know it thoroughly. So understand soul through matter. Understand soul through mind. Understand soul through consciousness. Then you would have known soul. But that's not enough still. So once we know what is soul, then we have to start thinking what is not soul. Very important. Any didactic, right? That's what we say, right? Any didactic approach should include that. If you want to find some find something or something, you have to understand what it is, but equally you have to understand what it is not then you don't leave any stones unturned. Still not enough. Once you find out what it is not, then you find out what is beyond. So our soul journey is going to include these three major steps. What is soul? What is not soul? What is beyond soul? And it's a fantastic journey. It's a journey worth taking. Journey worth taking right now. It's a long journey. It has to start now. If not now, then never. So behind the soul is something they call God, divine powers. I'm just guessing. And that's why it is important to understand what is not so, as it is important to understand what is so. What is, not so. What is, is so, and what is behind that? What is beyond? Yes, beyond. sure. God, God. Well, you used you the word analysis very quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to negate it at all. Mm -hmm. But this reminds me of something that there was a person in the previous stream of people. They all kinds of things. Right. And she was trying to understand what these dreams are. So she goes to Rajneesh and says, What does it mean? Mm -hmm. these kind of dreams, and dreams, and dreams and come. So Rajneesh says to this person, and I'll tell you a story. The story is that this person was going on the road. True story. This person was going on the road. And he sees powder. Mm -hmm. right? And he thinks to himself, Is this? Is this not really? I'm thinking. So he gets close to it, smells it. Looks like that, and touches it. Mm -hmm. It looks like that, and then takes it, and eats it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure this is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I was, oh, so now let me go this. So what he was trying to say is, yeah. you know, sometimes just take things as they come, mm -hmm. and don't do a lot of analysis on things. So you know what I'm trying to say is, I'm not again. No, it's really a good point. Actually, the point is, neither he said do not analyze. Okay. So the point is, the whole point about this spiritual practice or this journey is it has to be taken lightheartedly. Very, very important. Otherwise, if you strive, you're not going to get anywhere. Okay. So analyze lightheartedly. Yes. It's not like you put on your glasses and, and you're on it 10, 12 hours. And everybody's at a different point. Like you are at a different point. And if you start really understanding, it has to come naturally. It has to be lighthearted and it has to be fun. Because this thing needs stamina. And if something that is not fun, stamina does not last. So you have to make it a fun thing to do. So very, that's a good point. And so we brought up that issue of doing it lightheartedly. The second issue is inner things are not cow dung. They are things that are experiential, not experimental. Okay. So mind, for example, you cannot see it, you cannot touch it, you cannot smell it, so on and so forth. Right? 
how do you analyze the mind, right? So that's why it's important. You cannot just say this is mind. You will have to disintegrate it. I'm just using the word analysis, not from the intellectual perspective, but from the perspective of disintegrating certain things. So I think it's it's important to take it in a that the approach should be good. It should be a right approach, not taking it very seriously as you Right. It has to be absolutely um lighthearted. And um other important aspect is um the the aspect of constantly focusing on understanding something only through experience okay so that further clarifies the the aspect of analysis you know analysis means not just an intellectual activity it's an experiential activity for example you are actually experiencing the breath when you are feeling it not just thinking about it okay but the first practice was that uh, conscious feeling mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. I call it break that, you know, maintaining the abstract. Ab- absolutely. In fact, it has to be like I said, unshakable wholesome desire. Very important. Desire and desire actually is one of the mental elements which we will talk about. So, and another thing to remember is people who are lazy will give excuses to not analyze. It's very important. Stay as far away from those people as possible. Please. Okay, they'll say, why, why do I analyze? Just chant and just have the bliss. Or why all this hassle? Just believe in some deity and get your fortunes or place in the abode. Please stay away as far possible as you can from, from these people. I'm not saying in a, in a bad way. What I'm saying is... This, what I'm saying is... Right. No, out of compassion, we have to care for those people also. But there will be time you can care for them. But the reason is, this journey is very, very delicate. Okay, just like you plant a seed and then the seedling arises, it's very delicate. You have to protect it, and right? you have to build something around it. Otherwise, a cow will come, some ignorant, deluded animal will come and just eat it away. Right? So you protect your practice. You shield it from all the delusions, all the ignorance, all the stupidity that that's there out in the world. So that it grows and blossoms into, you know, enlightenment. You talked about the relationship between the mind and consciousness. I think um, the mind and the body tends to attract the consciousness. And unless you can release that, you know, the body tends to attract the consciousness. Yeah. Um, well, that's wonderful. Yeah. How do you release? How do you facilitate that release through your wisdom. It's not like tied with some knots, right? Your consciousness is not tied to your body and mind, mind with some knots, right? It's in the, it's, it's ignorance. Those are the knots. So how do you remove those knots so that consciousness is free? Through wisdom, right? But that's really what we are trying to do, to remove the uh, influence of body and mind on consciousness. In other words, in spiritual terms, we call it purifying the consciousness. And why are we doing all this? Because our aim is not only to be happy, but also be enlightened. Don't settle for happiness. That's too mediocre. Do not settle for anything less than enlightenment. Great, thank you.